we need to talk about AI and its impact on the hiring market. First of all, you have to know that every single prediction you see on the internet is biased, very biased. And these biases often come from CEOs of companies that only have one goal, and that is to drive their stock price very high. So if you read somewhere that there's not going to be developers next year or the year after, highly probably incorrect. So I'm going to give you my views now, and you have to know these are also biased, not because I have a hidden agenda, but because my bias, the time where I spend the most, is that in education. So this is my bias. So no one knows where AI will be. There is a chance that we'd be around three quarters of the exponential curve of the progress of AI because many companies are now hitting walls. We don't know, I have no idea. But if that's the case, we're gonna need a very, very, very big breakthrough in many different technologies to reach a, a much bigger improvement. So no one knows where we are at the curve of artificial intelligence. There is a chance that we might be three quarters of the way because many of the companies are now hitting walls. Maybe we're not, no one has any idea. But in all cases, it seems that the hype is gonna start to slowly be behind us and the real useful use cases will start to begin. So there are really useful use cases of AI and I think we're gonna see them proliferate very soon. And some of them are already available, of course, like Copilot and Cursor. Just last week, I was at performance.now in Amsterdam and the term AI did not appear in any of the talks, except of one from Chrome DevTools where they're rolling out some AI features. But this really shows you that when you're really solving advanced problems, AI can't really do much. These are really problems where you still have to know so much about how the browser works. You have to debug, talk to people, talk to stakeholders, and you still have to do the real work. But you're probably watching this video not because you have three years specialized in web performance, but most likely because you started learning programming or want to learn programming and you're wondering what's next, how can you adapt or what are the challenges. So in summary, AI is enabling us to learn much, much faster than before. I remember one of the teachers I knew, he would tell us that back in the days when he was learning programming, he had to drive to the library, look for answers in books, and sometimes he was able to spin up a dial-up connection and look for something online. And then when I was learning, we had Stack Overflow, which of course sometimes was right, sometimes was wrong. Most of the times was right. That's kind of the same with AI. Sometimes it's wrong. But we could have answers within minutes to hours and rarely on occasions within days. If you couldn't find any answer before, you had to ask the question, maybe even set up a bounty. And what is happening now is that you can get answers instantaneously. You can get answers within seconds or minutes. And of course, sometimes you don't really have the answer. You have to sleep on it. You have to ask multiple people. But in general, you're able to get most of your questions answered correctly most of the time and uh, pretty quickly, also most of the time. So that's great. It has benefits, but it of course also creates problems because now you're expected to know much more at a job because companies don't really wanna hire juniors anymore. Most of them, not all of them. And that's because for many companies, they see juniors as a liability. I know that's not very nice, but that's how they see it. They have to get someone, they have to train them. And then after a year, after six months or two years, they will be productive. And there's a very big chance that this person changes to another company. Now, I'm not saying that this thinking is correct. And luckily there are some startups that actually hire juniors because they can see the creativity they can do. Uh, but maybe they also think about it that this doesn't cost as much money or maybe they cannot find experienced people and that's the only way they can do it. But in general, if companies that can afford it can hire people with more experience, they would hire people with more experience. And I've seen it because I've taught many students and I followed along to see when they got their first job and how tough it was. But then after they had one year of experience, it became suddenly much more easier to get two, three opportunities where they could handpick or cherry pick the one that they like. But it was always hard to find the first one because of experience and knowledge also. Companies had to invest quite a lot in you. And this is what I wanna bring you to my prediction. Might be completely wrong, only time will tell. But there's a very high chance that coding might become a literacy, a prerequisite that we don't even mention. And I know this was popular in the news back then, but it's just like how now we don't explicitly expect people to be literate or know English, for example, in the countries where they speak English. That's just assumed. I think the bar has just gone up higher and it's no longer special if you know how to code because yeah, a machine can do that or even anyone can do that. There's been so many people learning how to code and it doesn't mean that you kind of have to quit that 
Uh, I mean, if you're only doing it for the money, maybe that's not for you. But it's more like this is the baseline now and you have to climb even higher. And this is a tough message. It's not easy because um, it means you have to learn even more. And it's kind of, yeah, even more capitalistic that you people expect more from you, even for less money, etc. But uh, this is kind of my expectation of it, that there's a very high chance that any coding job would just assumes you know a lot more than you do right now. And this kind of makes sense because we are able to learn faster. So you hear that from many people. I've also tried it. A few weeks ago, I was trying a new framework that I've never used before. And having, uh, I tried Cursor Editor, which was amazing because I could just work with a component that I've never seen before. And it really um, saved me around a week of work. It doesn't mean that I don't have to code anymore, like they put it on the news, but it means that you can attack new challenges much faster. Now, I am not sure if I've made accessibility issues in that, performance issues, so there was definitely some technical debt in that, and that's why I had to go read the documentation afterwards to see what do I need to change. So yeah, we can now learn much faster, and, and that's kind of like the invention of the printer. It took a while, but at one point, it wasn't any more special to be able to be literate, to write and read. And there's a big chance that AI might do the same for coding. We don't know for sure, no one knows, and I think this is a sobering reminder that there's a lot to life than just learning how to code. And maybe this is where you'll be able to bring something special from your side. And I'm talking communication skills or even experience in another field. The things that AI will not be able to do. My feedback or prediction comes from the fact that I do use AI at work and I used Cursor and I really loved it, but I stopped using it now because I felt that I really got used to hit tab and I wouldn't think before seeing the prediction and I thought this is gonna destroy my skills. And I think DHH, the creator of Ruby on Rails also mentioned something similar. So yeah, I am using AI a lot, but I'm also not using AI a lot because it just has no idea what it's doing. Whenever I'm working with uh, new features that landed in Chrome, whenever I'm doing stuff that are, yeah, honestly beyond the basics, it's really not there yet. And I don't know when it's going to be there. So this is my take on it. Let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.